Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new year. And on behalf of the entire team, I'd like to say Happy New Year to you. And this year would prove quite exciting with new tips, with new Python um, techniques, and then basic know hows and then to do's. All right. So we're starting off today's section with the one of the most requested, you know, tutorial lessons from our subscribers, which has got to do with the Windrose plots. And so to run a Windrose, it's quite easy to rather use a Windrose package. So what you do is to type in your pip, install Windrose, and then this should help you install the Windrose package. When you are done, what we'll do next is to import the components of the Windrose you want to use. So say from Windrose, import the Windrose axis. All right. Now we need to have wind direction, wind speed data. So let's generate random data sets by first importing the NumPy. That's numerical Python as NP. And for the wind directions, the yeah, DIR. That's okay. Let's just type in full direction. Because DIR is also a keyword. So we type in direction and then we have np.random that's random and we have 500 random numbers let's scale this up by a factor of 10. sorry i mean direction so by a factor of 360 so that it lies between the zero and then 360 degrees and then our speed we repeat same random you know 500 numbers but then let's rather scale this up to um, say a maximum of 15. all right so this is enough to produce the wind data. And then what we need to do next is to create a plotting axis. We have AX to be our wind rules axis. And then dot from underscore AX. All right, so they're gonna make use of the bar, which is from AX. So, I mean, the bar, AX dot bar. But then what this does is to, because we've imported a wind rules axis and use that as the reference for our AX. It sort of creates more a polar structure, so a circular plot of bars, and that will generate the wind rows. Okay, so what we need to first specify is our wind direction. So we specify in here the direction and then the speed. And this is enough to generate the wind rows map that's using defaults information all right and that's what we have over there now there are other components we can include so if i type in your ax dot bar and proceed it with a question mark that should give a help sort of a manual on the ax dot bar and what we can do so we have the number of sectors we can specify using integers the pins that's the um, individual i mean the various was an averaging windows or um, cumulative windows because we've done a cluster a clustered um, bar plot in this case by this i mean when you look at the plots each is clustered so you have the deeper blue being a different cluster there's another cluster and then moves on and on and on in that case so we can then include all of them as components that's if you don't want the default so let's say probably want to use a blue to so we don't want the direction in which they are blowing from, but we want to show the directions where they are blowing to. So we pass in blue to arguments and then set that to true. That means they should use the blue to rather than where they are coming from. Okay, and that's just more like a reverse of the initial plot. All right, um, we can also um, specify the edge color, say black. And you'll notice that um, the edges will be shaped out black. So you have outline, sort of outline. When you look at this, there are no outlines for each beam. But then when we run with this, the edge color now produces outlines, which are darker outlines. And then we can also, um, let's see, we've got some other things we can use. Okay, so we can set a color, which is like a set of colors for them, or we can use a CMAP. So what we can do with a CMAP is to import 
the um, mat plot lib. Okay, so let's just see from matplotlib import cm, which is the color map. And so now we add in here a C map and specify the C map. So we have cm dot, uh, let's change. This is a default rainbow color. So let's change this to probably a very this. Yeah. And then you notice that there shading also changes to whatever color map you specify. All right. And then when you're done, you can include a legend. So we dot legend produces a legend which tells us, okay, what each pane represents. And that's it. And if you are not satisfied, you can then specify the number of beans. So say beans equals to say four. We just need four beans. So now we Bin cumulate them or bin average them. And we now have just four bins as the purple, the blue, the green, and then the yellow. And then that matches also the legend. And then the sectors are just the various sectors of the circle. So if you indicate the end sectors, you can specify how many um, splits of sectors it should be plotted over. And that's all for the windows map. We can then match this with diff, um, I mean like different plot types. I believe you had an amazing section and we trust that you'll be able to put this to good use in your various projects, in your various works and your day-to-day -day activities. Um, it's 2021, so let's do something amazing. Let's do something great. Let's keep learning and keep pushing. Do have an amazing year and be good. See you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.